let's look at the last set of homework, 43 to 64. Let's look at what Newton's laws are. Newton's first law, we also call the law of inertia because the inertia of an object makes it want to not change its motion. Mathematically, we say that Newton's first law, this is some of the forces, is zero. This is when there is zero acceleration on an object. The second law, sum of the forces equals ma. All right, and we see the second law and the first law are very closely related and that the first law is a special case of the second law. And the third law is the action-reaction law, that the force of one on two is equal and opposite to the force of two on one. And, as I just told you, the third law is also known as the action-reaction law. All right. Now, imagine a place in the cosmos far from all gravitational frictional forces. If an astronaut throws a rock, what will the rock do? Well, if he throws the rock, if he gives it an initial velocity, then there are no forces. Then nothing will change its velocity. It will just keep going at a constant velocity forever. Now, in reality, that's not what happens. If we have, there's the Earth, there's our astronaut, he's a big astronaut, and he throws a rock, then that rock is going to get pulled into Earth somehow. It'll actually probably enter an orbit. Now imagine you have a two kilogram object moving with a constant speed of four meters per second. How much force is required to keep it going in the same speed in the same direction? It's moving with a speed of four meters per second. It's got that initial velocity. If there is no friction, it takes no force to keep it moving. If there is no friction. All right, but if there is friction, then the force will need to equal the frictional force. All right then the force applied is going to have to equal the frictional force to keep it moving at a constant speed. Um, and we don't have the coefficient of friction. So the answer to that question is, if there is no friction, no force is needed. If there is friction, then the applied force will need to equal the frictional force. Now Macintosh are arguing in a cafeteria. Max says, if he throws jello with a greater speed, it'll have more inertia. Tosh argues that, our sh that inertia doesn't depend upon speed, but on mass. Who's correct? Without making any apple jokes, it turns out inertia is a property of the stuff, the mass. How much stuff is in your object determines its inertia not the speed. You have the same inertia sitting in a chair as you do running. However, if you run, you will get less inertia because you will weigh less as you lose weight. Now, Mr. Weekly spends most Sunday afternoons at rest on the sofa watching pro football and consuming large amounts of food. What does this practice have on his inertia? Well, here's a picture of Mr. Weekly when he was 18 years old running around. Unfortunately, this is probably now a picture. Uh, let's make him 45. He's sitting on the couch. He has gained weight because of the food and not exercising. So since his mass increased, his inertia also increased. Because remember, mass inertia, mass is a measure of your inertia. Been too close is being chased through the woods by a bull moose, which he's attempting to photograph. The enormous mass of the bull moose is extremely intimidating. Yet if he makes a zigzag pattern, will he be able to use the large mass of the moose to his own advantage? The answer is yes. Here's Ben 
He's running. He's agile. He's getting between the trees. Here are my trees. My trees look like people. Let's make trees like this. Okay. Put the trees out there. They do look like my people, don't they? All right. As he runs and he zigzags, he can get around the trees. Now, look what happens when the big old moose, here's my moose, those are his horns, he's got a tail. Okay, when he tries to dodge a tree, what's going to happen? His inertia is going to make him want to keep going in a straight path. He's not going to want to veer to the side. So, because his inertia is going to keep him going in a straight line, the moose is going to have to slow down, or he's going to wind up hitting the trees. Now you're standing on the floor. What is the reaction force of your feet on the floor? Now, draw it like this. The force of your feet on the floor. The reaction force is, just reverse the words, is the floor pushing on your feet. Now, what is the reaction of your weight? Hmm. You remember, your weight is just the force of the earth pulling on you. So the reaction to your weight is the force of you pulling on the earth. You're pulling on a rope. What's the reaction force? Write down the force first. This is the force of you on the rope. The reaction force is going to be the force of the rope pulling on you. Remember, the reaction force always acts on a different object. Now, let's pick which Newton's law applies. Which one most governs? There can be some discussion about which one most governs these. <clears throat> now, if I have a helicopter that has to have two blades in order to fly with stability, let's see, we're looking for when do the forces balance. Stability means they balance. Whenever we have balance, that's some of the forces equal zero, that's the first law. If you were in an elevator and the cable broke, jumping up just before the elevator hit the ground wouldn't save you. Why wouldn't it save you? because the net force is going to be your mass times your acceleration. Some of the forces equals ma. You're going to have that same acceleration. And so this is the second law. You usually jerk a paper towel from a roll in order to tear it instead of pulling it smoothly. Why? Because the paper towel roll doesn't want to move. Its inertia is holding it still. Inertia, first law. A student desk changes the amount of force it puts on other objects throughout the day. Let's see, the desk changes because different forces are applied to it. It is reacting to what is set upon it, so that is the third law. Heavy objects are not easier to move around in a horizontal fashion on the moon than on the earth. Okay, that's because the applied force is MA, and so that is the second law. The stronger, heavier team of a tug of war doesn't create a larger tension in the rope than the lighter team. Well, that's because the tension in the rope is always the same. So the force pulled to the right is the same as the force pulled to the left. That is an action reaction pair. You're in a car traveling on a 10. Now, your backpack sits while you're traveling at 75 miles an hour. As far as your backpack is concerned, it's not moving. So this is the first law. It slides forward when someone cuts you off and you hit the brakes. It's sliding forward because it doesn't want to change its motion. That again is the first law. It slides back when the driver is accelerating to move, accelerating to merge. Now this could be, hmm, these, y you can have some um, argument that they might be second law, but this again is a first law because the point is it's sliding back, it's trying to stay where it was um, when 
even though the car moves forward at, at an accelerated rate. And the same thing with this last one. It slides back while it swerves through traffic. Now, you're sitting in your seat napping during class. Well, that certainly isn't an acceleration, is it? It's, it's definitely a first law. You stand on your scale to read your weight. This is an action-reaction pair because the scale is reading the force due to gravity down on you and you're reading your normal force. A serious argument could be made that this is also first law, but we'll go with third law. Now your hand hurts when you catch a fastball with no glove. Why? Because there is a force applied equal to MA, where A is the acceleration of that ball. So that is number two.